Today on The Boot Guy, we are looking at the Eric Warthog, the Patriot model. So it's going about two and a half years since I reviewed a pair of work hogs. So when they released the Patriot model, I felt it was time. I felt it was time to get a new pair to get it out there because some of the updates to the new work hog in comparison to the older review, they're outstanding. They have really stepped up their game. They have changed things. They have listened to you guys about what makes a more comfortable and better slip on work boot. So to get it out of the way, let's talk about those changes. Let's talk about this new sole. Duratread has changed. Duratread has become more bouncy, more grippy, and longer wearing. How do they do it? Chemistry, of course, and just pure engineering. By redesigning the whole configuration of the sole on the work hog, what they've come up with is the most generalized fit for everybody for all types of work. So you get traction, you get stability, and you get a very long wearing sole. Now adapted into that long wearing sole is the ATS Max Shank. Now this is the shank that is offering a ton of support if you gotta climb metal rungs, if you gotta climb up ladders, if you gotta do that type of work, or if you actually, with a nice wide shank like this, if you're standing still and you just need a solid platform to stand there, whether you got a weight or whether you just gotta, you're standing there. And I mean, standing sounds like, yeah, you know what, he stands around all day. But standing's a lot of stress on the body because after a long enough period, what ends up happening is your muscles start to get a little sore. Having a nice wide shank and having a nice tight heel cup keeps your feet in place. So even if you are rocking around in your calves and flexing your knees, at least you know your feet are on a nice, solid, soft platform that can absorb that energy. So one of the main changes I noticed pulling the work hog out of the box is that Eric has moved into a soft welt on this boot, where at one time it was a harder plastic welt. The new soft welts, I see a lot of companies doing it, and it makes a lot of sense. So the boots are not resolvable or recraftable because the soft welt is really there for stability and strength and flexibility. Because with the soft welt, breaking this boot in, getting it to fit, making it comfortable to your foot happens a lot easier. So with the Dura Tread sole, what you're getting is you get the hard shell on the outside, slip resistant pads, the ATS exposed shank, and you get this midsole compound, this buttery, springy, soft, gummy midsole. And that's when I say energy return, energy absorption, that's the stuff that's working towards your work day. Now the foot of the boot is their premium full grain leather. This is their work leather. This isn't their dress leather. This isn't their exotic leather. This is the heavy duty oiled work leather. So it's a little bit thicker. It's a little bit heavier than some of the other stuff. So that means it's a little bit stronger and it's gonna last a heck of a lot longer. The good thing about this leather is that it sucks up oil and it cleans up nicely. When you go to put mink oil in this, if you're a mink oil guy, it's gonna change the color, of course, but they're gonna look beautiful after that first initial cleaning, after a few weeks of working in these. Clean them up, oil them up. You're gonna have a really good looking boot after that. All right, let's get to this upper. So you get flags on both sides, the fronts and the backs on the Sandstorm Camo Cordura shaft. Now, I love Cordura. Cordura is one of those fabrics that you can do so much with it in an industrial setting, in an equestrian setting, in all kinds of settings. Cordura is like the perfect shell 
fabric for guys who are rough on stuff. Now there's different types of Corduras out there. There's tactical military grade and there's equestrian grade and there's a few other backpacking and outdoor grades. This is an equestrian grade Cordura. You can tell by the hand it's a little bit softer. It doesn't feel as nylon-y as some of the tactical backpacks or some of the tactical vests that they make out there out of it. It has a nice softer sense to it. So what that means is you start to wear this boot, as you start to flex it, as you start to breathe in it and live in it, this is going to soften up nicely. They're going to come on and off a lot easier. Out of the box, getting these things on and off with that fresh equestrian Cordura could be a little tough for a week or two. Use a boot jack, you won't have a problem. On the inside, you find a beautiful polyester liner, which is going to help wick away moisture from your foot. As you move down inside there, you'll find a hard footboard. Now, what Eric does that a lot of companies don't do is they add flex lines to the footboard. They add four major flex lines. So as you're walking around, moving around in this boot, if it's just a solid footboard, you're going to crack the footboard. Eric understands where you are pushing those flexes, where they're happening, where they come from climbing, where they come from crotching down, and where they come from just your basic gait, your step. They put those flex lines in those spots. Now when it comes to insoles inside Eric boots, they never mess around. In this one, they're using the ATS Max outstanding insole. Adding this insole to this boot with that dual density sole makes this thing more like a really comfortable chair. It's soft, it's bouncy, it fits right out of the box. And what they do that most companies don't do is they add these two sticky pads, four foot green pad. It's soft, it's comfortable, it's bouncy, but what it does is it's got a weird texture to it. So as you start to sweat inside your boot, as you're pulling your foot in and out, the insole doesn't come with your sweaty foot. This sticks to that hard footboard, that sticks to the hard footboard, they stay in place so you can move your foot in and out and you're not adjusting your insole every time you take your boot off. Now the boot comes in a steel toe and a non-steel toe model. This is non-steel toe. The non-steel toe is an EH rated boot, which is really nice, especially for guys who don't want the steel toe that work around electrical and oil and stuff like that, where combustion is a real issue great boot. They're not FR rated. There's nothing like that, but they are an EH boot. So they are going to pass inspection. If say some OSHA or some foreman's giving you a hard time, the EH marking is right inside the shaft. I'd even talk about the wide square toe, something that makes the work hog the work hog is the fact that the wide square toe is a little bit wider than most square toes and it gives you a nice platform inside there for your foot to sit in. It doesn't feel like a western boot, a dress western square toe boot. It feels more like a work western square toe boot or what that should actually feel like. Plenty of room with a nice padded section in this upper part so you're not just sitting against the leather all day long. It's reinforced. It's not reinforced with any metal. Like I said, this is a soft toe model, but the toes are reinforced. So you are going to get some structure and stability from the makeup of the upper. So the shaft height on the work hog is 11 inches, which in my opinion is probably the perfect height, 11 and 12 for a work pull on boot. So you actually get that protection. So you actually get that turn that happens when you have a nice long boot and it also brings the boot closer to your hand so you can get it on easier with the boot pulls. Like I said earlier, first week, week and a half, it's going to be a little tough getting this on and off if you're not using a boot jack. But if you are using a boot jack to get your pull on boots on and off, you'll have no problem. So that's the Work Hog Patriot Edition from Area. Guys, if you're wearing the Work Hog, whether it be an older model or a newer model, please comment below. If you've got the newer model, 
comment below. Let us know what you're thinking of the new Duratrade sole and with the new ATS Max shank. Is it helping out? Do you feel that you're getting the support you need? Does the 90 degree heel come in handy with that shank? Please comment below. Hey, if you're interested in seeing some close up detailed photos of the Warthog, if you want to see how they actually sew the flag into the upper, or if you want to see how many stitches are put into the boot pull so you understand that this is a really strong boot pull, swing by the bootguy.com. I'll have all those photos compiled into a blog posting titled Air It Warthog Patriot. Please don't forget to hit my subscribe button below. You know it really helps out. And remember, if you like the videos I create, if you enjoy this whole style of review, think about supporting me on Patreon. Hey, if you're about to pick up your first pair of Western pull-on work boots and you got a few questions about size and fit, how they should fit, how the heel should feel if your heel is slipping out of your new boots, feel free to shoot me over an email and we can discuss how this should all work. All right, until the next time, I'm the Boot Guy. Thanks a lot for watching.